Hawaii's glamorous image as a picture postcard paradise belies a deep social malaise. We have the highest per capita rate of homelessness in the country, which is ironic because we have some of the greatest concentrations of wealth as well. I think it could be a tempest building up and that pressure we can't allow to explode. A surge in homelessness is pushing the system to breaking point, exposing an ugly social divide in the Aloha state. I think we're one of the stronger communities as far as getting together and saying we don't want the homeless in our neighborhood and we need to be strong and vocal and try to do whatever we can to keep them out. You can't have a civil society where it's okay for someone to defecate in front of Burberry's and wipe their ass on the corner of the building. I'm sorry. All right? Doesn't work. With authorities cracking down on homeless camps, there's growing disquiet about criminalizing the poor and vulnerable. You know, we are living in our cultural rights. Um, some tell us different, you know, some tell us that we're living wrong, but I don't think so. As the crisis worsens, a remarkable group of women are forging ahead with their own solution. Before you leave this place, I will make sure that I changed your mind about homeless and houseless people. In just a few years, Hawaii has been caught up in a crisis of homelessness. Thousands live rough on beaches, in parks and on streets. Their lives mired in poverty and trauma. Authorities are struggling to contain the spread. Can we cover that for you? Go please? to hell, you won't give me water, damn my face. To say that um, we were caught off guard may be only part of the story. We were to a degree, but also we saw an incredible surge just in the last few years. It's why it's become our biggest issue. I'd say it has attracted more attention, at least from my perspective, than any other issue in the last 20 years here in Hawaii. It's very expensive to live in Hawaii. In most cases, people have to work two jobs to pay their rent or to buy a house. So it's always been expensive, but then when there was a surge in cost because there's been an inventory shortage, we saw it become impossible for some middle class people to afford housing and they became homeless. So that was another big problem. Now you had poverty, increased cost of living, methamphetamine addiction. There was a wave of a drug addiction which really fries people's brains and that makes it impossible to function in normal society and a lot of those people end up on the street. About a fifth of Hawaii's homeless population have recently moved here from the mainland. Attracted by the idea that life is easier in the island state, they often discover a different reality. In Honolulu, filthy hovels inside stormwater drains and under motorways have sparked panicked alarms over public health and safety. As elsewhere in the United States, here the average life expectancy for a homeless individual is just 51 years old. My name is Nick Gruby. I'm a reporter with Honolulu Civil Beat. We are an investigative news outlet based in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've walked this street several times before. A few years ago, it's just continued to grow to where now, as you can see, we're walking through the middle of the street right now because the sidewalks are covered in people's homes. Basically, the city is looking at including this street in its sit lie ban, which would mean that all of this will have to go. Um, but the question is, is where will the people go? 
and that's what the city's been struggling with for years. Now they're gonna have to pack up and, and move on um, or have their belongings taken. The idea is, is that if you've been disrupted, it will make you uncomfortable enough to maybe perhaps make better decisions about your life and accept the help that's being offered, because there is a great deal of help being offered. The sit and lie laws are controversial, with critics claiming that they criminalize the homeless. It was along Waikiki Beach the city first introduced its sit and lie crackdown, after hotels and other businesses loudly complained that the homeless camps were spooking tourists. A lot of people have ideological and emotional blinders on that, that really distorts their common sense. And if you piss on the tourist industry, um, there's a huge economic cost that will create more poverty and will reduce the tax base, which by the way, homeless services are dependent upon. We might even find some here today. <laughs> even though they're cleared out, they come back. We've got a chair left over. Lane Goodall says she's on a mission to keep her community clean and safe. We have laws that in Hawaii that state it's illegal to live on the streets. And we have this state of lawlessness right now. Let's see, we have some graffiti here now. With the help of other local residents, she patrols the streets of Hawaii Kai, looking for any signs of the homeless. So again, you see the posted sign there now for private property. As soon as you see one tent go up, the community needs to call the police, call the city, call the state, and get them taken away. Uh, once you have one tent, then two tents, then you're outnumbered. When homeless camps began springing up in local parks and bushland, residents began worrying about property values and the risk of brush fires engulfing their million dollar homes. With a knife and he lunges after this man. Like many locals in Hawaii Kai, Lane views the island's homelessness as a lifestyle choice. A lot of the people here are one-way ticket from the mainland. Word of mouth is kind of spreading and people on cell phone and social media now, a lot of the homeless people have Facebook pages. And so you've got this underground movement of the homeless and the squatters and the freeloaders, but everybody needs to contribute. You can't have a society where you just have one factor that just takes and takes and takes. Hawaii's homeless explosion isn't confined to its urban center. One of the biggest reasons we did this today was because this bridge is actually a flood zone and it rains a lot in Hawaii so when, you know, the water comes down we don't want people to get hurt. There, there was a house here for a dwelling. Yeah. There was a dwelling you could see that. Most of the people here have already left and the rest scramble to gather their belongings and leave to avoid trouble with the police. So you see it going all the way out to the water and then to the uh, trails here as well. Yeah. You see maybe about five or six camps. There. Spreading out into the nearby mangroves, this camp was extensive and several young families were living here. Where I'm from, it was very like... For young homeless outreach workers like Casey, who try to get family shelter, it's a difficult challenge. It's really hard, especially because, you know, these kids go to school and their classmates know that they're, you know, going home to no homes. None of those caught up in today's sweep seem interested in outside help. Do you want to stay with these uh, friendly folks? To, uh... No, I'm fine. Okay, we'll I'm see fine. you later then. Thank you. Minus the bike, it's not yours. Minus the bike? Yeah. yeah. Homeless is not illegal. It's not against the law to be homeless. Yeah. So we can't arrest people 
for no apparent reason. Yeah. Hi, I'm Heather. What is your name? Bobby. Bobby? Every time nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. I got infected and I went to the doctor and the doctor uh, put me in a hospital for one week. Oh my. My name is Heather Wayhab. I'm the community outreach RN at IHS. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You. I could not believe that these people were walking, talking, and functioning, you know, eating and able to walk about with these horrendous wounds, wounds that we never saw really in school or in the hospital, because they're really big and infected and abscesses and all kinds of crazy stuff. The homeless are the, uh, the people that have the least political clout, so they get forgotten too often until the system begins to crash. Are you having any pain right now? Mm, just a headache. Okay. Well, we're going to get you in a room shortly. We're going to do a physical exam, okay? Thank Thanks, Eric. I think the biggest frustration is that your physician who really wants to see their patients get better is to see that revolving door. Okay, very good. It's like this horrific Groundhog's Day of sorts that occurs every two weeks with these individuals because they just aren't able to access or have those determinants of health of their social care to be squared away once they leave our four walls and they, they suffer and they fail. and they come back us battered, beaked, and broken, and at death's door. And we start all over again. Queen's Medical Center is on the front line of Hawaii's explosion in homelessness, seeing hundreds of patients every week, some of them costing more than a million dollars a year each in medical care. What do you do when you've got some individuals who are struggling greatly, who need our um, compassionate support, but who also are threatening the entire health economy of our state. In order to get the head of an explosive problem, you have to have a new model of solution. My model is a new model. As a practicing emergency room doctor, Senator Josh Green understands the grave health risks of homelessness, and he's proposing a radical solution. Yeah, I think this is going to be the first time that we're going to have a hybrid program that's both seamless and completely integrated. So Treat homelessness as a medical condition and allow doctors to prescribe housing for the homeless paid for by federal medical funds. The idea is simple. Get people into homes and save billions of dollars. It's resources that are already in the budget, in the Medicaid budget, but it totally flips how we use them so that we can actually avail ourselves of a lot of housing quickly. If we don't, we'll see the problem grow. It could get much worse if we don't have a game changer. While prescribing housing could be a game changer, the average price of a home in Hawaii is around 700,000 US dollars, making affordability a major hurdle. Amidst Hawaii's housing crunch, there's a growing push to recognize alternative communities. Aloha, my name is Twinkle Borge. I'm the leader here of Puohonua Wainai. Wainai means refugee, people of the land, who's the caretakers. How you live is who you are, that's how I feel. Honey, pick up the recyclables, put it where it belongs, and the rubbish. Feed the cat. Oh. All right, come and get these rubbishes. This is no ordinary homeless encampment. Anyone who comes to live here must sign a contract agreeing to the rules. Amongst them, every resident must contribute eight hours a week to community service. This is our community service, so each section will have their areas for um, concentrate on to rebuild, 
fix up. So like this side, if this fence is down, we'll come in as a community, go and help strengthen your walls and whatnot. If rubbish needs to be pulled out, then you'll see our vehicles come in and start taking out the rubbish. The encampment is built from tarpaulins, tent poles and recycled goods, but there's little protection from the elements. So we usually use these pallets for rebuilding your flooring, taking your um, tent off the ground. So when it rains or anything, you're not in the water. You know, when it does get, when it do get high tide here, you, as you notice the ocean, this water can come as far as the tree. So these pallets play one big role here. What is that? Baby chicken. This cohesive community is remarkably organized divided into different sections, each led by a captain. Most of them are women. Everybody calls me Auntie Loki, but my real name is Rose Chumlona. And um, I'm one of the leaders out here. We use maternal instincts out here. All the women out here have that, yeah? And when it comes to the little ones, it's automatic now. They're automatically going to protect the little ones. Um, our children, our safety, our rules, everything is based upon the safety of our children. With the safety of the children paramount, there are stringent rules and a three strikes you're out system. This is our donation tank. We have a donation coordinator, his name is Duke. Twinkle's adopted son, Adam, helps to enforce them. If you steal, it's an automatic out. So, and especially if it's around here, or if it's out there and it comes in here, you're automatically out, completely. I will come back, Twinkle will let me know, she'll give me the papers of the violations. I'll go, read it to them, and they'll sign it. And then if it happens like two more times, because we, we get three chances, right on the third chance, I come in and I kick you right out. My name is Adam Fuyava. I'm Twinkle's son. She has been my inspiration for a long time. Two extra. I don't even need to be living like this. Like in an encampment, I can just go straight into a home. But I choose not to. I choose to stay here because I love the people and I love how like things work here. It's inspiring. The resilience of this remarkable community is admirable. The only electricity is from those lucky enough to own and fuel a generator, and the nearest toilets are hundreds of meters away in a local park. Their biggest concern is water. With water pipes cut off to the camp, Residents need to fill bottles and cart it from a tap at the nearby marina. It's one of the many daily chores that keeps this place going. How come the Hawaiians is struggling here? You know, when this is our land, you know, you came here, you took our land from us and left us like that. Just an hour's drive from Honolulu, the reality of life for these Hawaiians is vastly different to the one that mainland tourists enjoy. Twinkle became homeless 14 years ago, and creating this community has been a long struggle. I came out here in October of 2003. I was working two full-time jobs but I fell in love with someone who I thought that would never fool around on me and whatnot, and I became so depressed. I had all this money that was saved and everything to find out that this person would wipe me out of my money and everything. Twinkle firmly believes that home is where the heart is. For me, homeless is someone who lives in a van that has no home. You know, but I live in a tent, that's my home. I have had tour groups that come in and many a times I straight out tell them before you leave this place I will make sure that I changed your mind about homeless and houseless people that live out in the elements as we do and many times I have 
Um, they're amazed of what the people do here. They're amazed because when once they pass these these double poles, they feel that rush of aloha. But it's that that angle, that certain angle. So it comes like this. And then it comes Buoyed like this. by the success of their community, Twinkle and her team captains have big plans for the future. The community wants the right to lease the land where they live and to build more durable homes with solar power and proper sanitation. They also want fences and security cameras to keep them safe. But the camp's future is far from guaranteed. Behind closed doors, there's an ongoing discussion between those who want it dismantled and its residents put into shelters and those that want it recognized and preserved. Basically, we're just homeless in our own homes. That's how I feel. Many locals regard the Waianae encampment as an eyesore and a perceived magnet for crime, amidst concerns that it is growing too big. We the crane outside there. So far, despite Twinkle's pleas, Hawaii's governor, David Ige, has held back from making any commitment to letting them stay. I believe that our count was over 500, and I said, we cannot put 500 here. Yeah, we can fit maybe 300 comfortable, but we usually stay under the radar of 300. Twinkle says she'll do what it takes to save her community but she's confident that she can convince her detractors. It'll be a little squabble. I'm not looking at it as a huge fight. Um, I don't know why they're afraid of working with us. As Hawaii grapples with its homeless crisis, there's also a sense of hope that enterprising solutions can be found to alleviate the pressure. Twinkle believes her camp could serve as a model for other houseless communities across the islands. She says it's not only a time for new ideas, but a new mindset as well. This is reality, you know. Um, if they want to learn more about the situation and, and to come up with a solution, come and sit down with us, you know, because the answer lies here not there, not in their office, not in their books, here.